<laughs> Get the life nerd. Hey everyone, so check it out. I just finished this. This is the new Lady Loki crown from the Disney Plus Loki series. It is a little bit different than how Lady Loki is in the comic books. And I'm gonna stop you right there. If you were just thinking about commenting about whether or not this is actually Lady Loki in the Disney Plus series, we don't know yet. But it's definitely inspired by or impersonating a Lady Loki. So we're gonna call this a Lady Loki crown and I'm gonna teach you how to make it. So this is my patterning process. I do have patterns available on my Etsy store and you could purchase this pattern and then use this video to learn how to assemble it. But when I'm making a pattern, you can see here, I pre-measure out either my head or a mannequin's head. If you're measuring out a mannequin's head, then you need to make sure that you add an extra inch because mannequin's heads are usually pretty small. In this video, you can see I do multiple iterations of the pattern and I keep changing and checking my work. I usually do it in one half and then fold it over to duplicate the pattern. Then after you cut out the pattern, you're going to want to try it on on yourself or the mannequin to make sure that things sit okay. Sometimes you'll have to do multiples of the same pattern just to make sure you get it right. I think this pattern took me three tries to get right. I pattern on basic computer paper, but a lot of people pattern on one millimeter EVA foam or on plastic butcher's paper. So lots of options here. This is the way that I find best. And, and remember, you can buy this pattern on Etsy. I trace the pattern onto four millimeter EVA foam. Remember that patterns are just one big pattern split up into multiple patterns. So from the same pattern, I'm gonna have to cut out the center piece from the original pattern to make another pattern. So patterns are just multiple patterns within each other. The centerpiece on Lady Loki's crown is the part that's probably the one of the most difficult, only because it has a couple different levels of elevation, meaning there's a few different design elements. I'm using this purple pen to trace where I'm gonna use a Dremel to edge out or reduce that area. On the back, I'm cutting a V to make sure I have an area to glue together later so that this piece of foam becomes more three-dimensional. Here you can see the Dremel and I'm just removing some foam to make the middle area of this medallion stand out and this back part look like it's on a separate piece. Please note that on my foam patterns on my Etsy page, I actually deleted this step and made it easier. Pay attention to the notes on the printout so you know what to do. This step I thought was a little bit more difficult and I simplified it in the Etsy patterns. Here I'm using my knife edge to cut tiny little areas into the phone. I'm only going about halfway in and then I'm going to use my heat tool to heat it up so that this area becomes more pronounced. It's just a tiny detail, but it makes a big difference. And here we have putting glue on the back where we cut out that little V earlier. Wait for the glue to dry and then you can press the two pieces together which will make this medallion become a little bit more three-dimensional. And then just clean up your edges with a rotary tool like a Dremel. The next step in the process is to take your Dremel or a rotary tool and round off the edges on the Loki crown. If all you do is use your knife edges, some edges will be inconsistent or you might have some drag marks. This way you can make the crown look more finished and have a nice sleek edge. Next, we move on to the most difficult part of the crown, which is the Loki horns. I included it in my patterning in this video just because it's super simple and I wanted you to see how straightforward it can be. After you trace the Loki horns onto some foam, you're gonna wanna make sure that the two inside edges are cut at a 45 degree angle. It's very important that you cut these at an angle and you can see I'm turning my knife here. That way the two edges go together smoother and you'll have more of a curved shape. If you feel like you need to, clean up the edges even further with the rotary tool, so that way the 45 degree angle is more pronounced. Then heat up the edges with a heat gun to uh, make them warm and then push in the center to round out as much as possible ahead of time. The more you pre-shape your horns, the better they will glue together. Then add contact cement to eat the inner side of the horns and please let it dry thoroughly. It needs to be completely dry to cure. Then mark, uh, match up your registration marks on both sides. This can get a little tricky as you'll see the horn will look misshapen. Don't worry, there's a lot of things that we're gonna do to make this horn look great. Right now it's still pretty two-dimensional looking. All right, onto my super, super secret, which is stick a pencil on the inside of it, pointy end towards the pointy end of the horn, and then use a rotary tool to round out all the seams. The seams might split apart, but it's okay. It already has contact cement, so just re-push together. 
we repeat the process on the smaller Lady Loki horn, and you'll notice it's probably going to feel a little bit more difficult just because the piece is so small. It's like working with like tiny baby toys. It's really tiny and hard to maneuver, but you'll get the hang of it. And same drill as before, stick a pencil on the inside. I put a rubber band on this pencil to make it a little bit thicker. That way you have something to hold onto without touching the foam and use your rotary tool to smooth out all of the edges. You can further use a heat tool again to heat them up and try to round out the shape as much as possible. Make sure that both ends match up because it's important that the bases look the same. A part that gets rushed over a lot in videos is the gluing part, so I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time here because it's so important that you measure and remeasure and measure and remeasure. My early iterations of the Lady Loki crown had the horns in the wrong spots, so I'm glad I tried a bunch of times and re-glued them on the first ones that I made to make sure that they were correct. So just measure, make lines on your foam. Don't worry, you're going to cover it up in Plasti Dip later, so just check and recheck. I use a pencil here to draw lines on the foam and make sure I have the positioning just right. The next part was the most fun because I get to use foam clay. You're gonna use foam clay and kind of push it into the center of the broken horn and then smash a piece of foam clay between your thumb and your pointer finger, press it together so you have a thin disc to cover the top. And then after that's pressed down, you're gonna dip a paintbrush in some water and smooth it all out. Use the tip of a pencil to carve in a slightly broken texture or a slightly curved texture to represent where the horn broke off. This next step is optional, so only do it if you feel comfortable. It requires you to use a knife like this and to cut very, very slightly into the foam, not very deep at all, make tiny little cuts, and then use your hot tool to set the cuts and expand them. I'm just going through with my rotary tool here just to make sure I clean up some edges. I wanna make sure they're all nice and smooth and rounded out and look professional. The last step is going to be to put some trim around the edges of these horns. This is included in my online pattern and it's really easy to do and gives it a nice clean finish. In the Loki Disney Plus show, she has these uh, thin edges around her horns, but they have a raised edge in the middle. Cut them out on tiny craft foam. You can use regular craft foam from um, Joann's or like Walmart. It's just the thin stuff you can get in the kids section and it glues on really easily. Repeat for both horns and then you'll have your finished Lady Loki crown. All we need to do now is prime and paint and shade. The next important step is to do three light coats of Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip is a rubber sealant and it works amazing and gives a smooth finish. To paint the crown, I used two very light coats of Rust-Oleum Copper Metallic Finish. Then I followed with one to two coats of this beautiful Rust-Oleum Gold Color. Be very careful with using spray paint because it will crack if you go too heavy. A lot of creators don't like to use spray paint, but I really do think it's fine if you are light-handed. I finished up by doing some shading with my airbrush, but I can do another video on that if you would like it. I wish I could show you here, but it's just complex and would require a lot more time. Here's the finished crown in daylight so you can see how it reflects the light and how pretty it is. If you love this crown, please make sure to go to my Etsy page and you can download it there. I also have more files and other Loki patterns, including the breastplate. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment below if you wanna see more content like this or if you have any questions.